Hey guys, Planet Everything here, and today we are going to be discussing the new MacBook Air and its things that it seriously thrives in and what it doesn't thrive in. So, with the new MacBook Air comes a step up from the last generations and I'm sure a lot of you have seen videos on this and seen a lot of information about how it is probably the best in eight years or so. Um, and I would definitely agree with that of course, but I would also say that it is not even close to the performance of a MacBook Pro. And there is good reason for that. Apple in general does not have great graphics processing power or um, graphics cards in general in their computers. Now the MacBook Pros that they've developed that they've developed within the last two years or so have seriously upped the ante on that and have some very good graphics processing power and their RAM is also very good as well on these on these on these computers. However, for the MacBook Air, you're going to get uh, either a 16 or an 8 gigabyte uh, processor, um, memory processor, and that's, that's a, it's not, it's not exactly, 8 gigabytes is a little bit too little to do basically most things um, as far as it goes with picture editing, video editing, anything of that sort. Chances are you're not buying a MacBook Pro for that, or a MacBook Air for that. But if you are happening to buy MacBook Air for it, um, you can get those 16 gigabytes of RAM for an extra $200, and you can get um, the minimum amount of SSD space, uh, which is uh, 256 gigabytes. Um, it will come close to comparing to a MacBook Pro model, especially if you upgrade the processor to its maximum amount because you can get a lot of cores, and um, that's a really helpful thing. So the problem with the MacBook Air that is not it, that that keeps it from reaching that potential that a MacBook Pro has is the graphics card and the graphics processing power. Now, computer can pro can power a 6K display, yeah, but rendering rendering images, 3D images, um, anything through animation or any video editing, any photo processing, it's going to take a while, especially at the baseline. Uh, well, well, for base, we're not talking about baseline specs. If you're getting it maxima maximized on your processing power and your CPU, um, your biggest downfall is going to be your GPU. So what you're going to need to do is either, well, hopefully if you did max out your processing power as far as it goes with CPU, you won't have a huge issue um, when it comes to GPU because your CPU can pick up some of the some of the slack that is on the end of the GPU. But um, for, for, for programs like Adobe uh, After Effects, you have to have somewhere in the range of one point f of, of of two gigabytes of s what was it called like G RAM, C RAM, P RAM, something like that of graphics processing power um, in order to have a fairly solid and fairly continuous workflow in an application like that. Now the problem is that you will have some big issues. On, on the on the part that the MacBook Air is 1.5 gigabytes. Um, so if you're going into something like Photoshop, you might be okay. It'll take you a little bit, but you might be okay. Um, if you're going into something like After Effects, you can use that MacBook Air, but it will have some serious struggles on the, the end of rendering. Um, it will slowly render, but it won't. It, it won't fail you. It will probably do it. It's just, unfortunately, it's going to take a very long time. Um, and then again, you're probably not buying a MacBook Air to do heavy processing or, or things that would otherwise be deemed um, strenuous for a computer to do. Um, but if you were to need to be able to process something on After Effects with a MacBook Air, you could do it. It's just your CPU 
would have to pick up a lot of the slack for your GPU. So you would have to have at least that 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is the maximum you can have. So you can use that 16 gigabytes of RAM. And as long as you're not doing anything while it, the video is rendering, you will be able to process all of that with the 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, of, of DRAM, or uh, whatever the graphics processing um, memory is called. Uh, 1.5 gigabytes will make, do, you will be able to make do with 1.5 gigabytes if you have that 16 gigabytes of RAM. So what I have over here is a MacBook Pro um, 2019. Uh, it was the one released in, uh, like July or like, I don't know, something of 2019, like spring of 2019. And so the computer that I have is actually 32 gigabytes of RAM and it does have a GPU within it. It doesn't have a horrible one. But the solution I found is to use that thing called the Blackmagic Design eGPU uh, to pick up on the end of the, e of the GPU that is lost. So there's a Vega 56 graphics card uh, within that um, that has plenty of gigabytes of RAM uh, for me um, to use for basically anything, and it allows me to power this 4K 49 inch or 40 49 or 47 inch display behind me, um, basically very effortlessly. Um, it starts to actually pick up most. Um, the GPU actually picks up most. I actually don't know why this is. When you're browsing the web, it it starts really getting loud. Uh, the the GPU itself actually starts seriously needing to cool off, and it's really weird. I don't know why that is actually, but uh, I don't. I, I I believe that that MacBook Air can actually be plugged into an eGPU. In which case, if you buy this eGPU, this one specifically is the more expensive one that's like $1,200. There's also like a $600 eGPU also made by Blackmagic. Um, and you could get something similar to this. Uh, it's just the biggest problem is the AMD um, drivers that are installed with it, like um, that, are pre that come pre-installed with it because it's sold through Apple. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, please share with your friends because, you know, Shane's caring. Oh.